Okay, good morning. So as we are, welcome to Healthy for the Holidays. We're on day 25, I think. Um, as we are moving towards the end of the year and people are starting to think about the new year and turn over from all the holiday madness into, okay, what does the new year bring? Uh, we're going to start talking about new year. Um, what do you want to call it? Visions, goal setting, resolutions. The name doesn't really matter how you want to intentionally look at the year ahead, 2023, this year. Um, before we do that, I want to introduce a um, interesting dichotomy that I see going on in the industry before we start thinking about how you intentionally want to focus on 2023. We're going to do that in the next couple of days. Um, and then we'll spend next week talking about, okay, it's a, it's a new year and we've turned over into, um, 2023 and, and, and what are we doing to start the new year in the way that we want it to be and how we want to feel before we get there. I made a post this morning that um, many of you seem really interested in and I had some questions about. And so I wanted to dive into it. And here's, here's what I see in the industry. You've got the diet industry and you've got the anti-diet industry. And in the past couple of decades, I would say, there's been a surge, a movement in the anti-diet industry that started with um, the intuitive eating space, moved into health at every size space, you saw the body positive space, and these spaces emerged almost as a counter attack to the diet industry. Now, don't get me wrong. If you know me, if you've been following me for some time, there are some beautiful things that have emerged from these spaces, intuitive eating, health at every size, body positive, some beautiful things um, that as a clinician, ideally, if you're working in this space, we've always done. But it really mainstreamed this idea of focusing on a better relationship with your body and a better relationship with food and sort of mainstreamed this idea of, of having a different relationship with food in your body and, you know, mainstreamed some of these um, memes you see, like you can't hate yourself into loving yourself and, um, you know, that uh, dieting is not the answer or weight loss is not the answer to loving yourself. Those things really became very popular with some of these movements. Um, also, uh, body acceptance and, ac and accepting our bodies at different sizes and phases in life, all of that stuff is really, really good. Um, and there is a bit of a dark side to the anti-diet health at every size and body positive movement as well. And what's been interesting in my practice over the past couple of years, um, really I have seen a number of clients who have emerged from, I guess maybe I don't wanna call it the dark side, but there's the underbelly, there's the flip side of what the anti-diet health at every size and body positive movements are trying to do. And that is, that there is a sense of shame that people hold for wanting to lose weight because, and here's where the, the dichotomy comes in, is that the diet industry is selling, weight loss is the way to happiness. And the anti-diet industry is selling, letting go of weight loss is the way to happiness. And in fact, some of you know this about my story, some of you may not, but to make a very, very long story short, in the very beginning of my career, when I was in my early twenties, just a baby um, doing this work, I met with a very prominent figure in the health at every size um, uh, organization. And I talked to her about, hey, I have this desire to um, help people who are wanting to lose weight, feel better about themselves, you know, feel better about themselves and their body from a clinical perspective, because of course that's my training and help them with the behaviors and tactics and practical tactical tools in order to lose weight. Like I want to do both of those at the same time. And she said very clearly to me, absolutely not. If you are helping your clients with weight loss, you do not get to be in this health at every size club. Um, there's no space for you here is essentially what she told me. And I left the office feeling very deflated. And at the same time, there was a nagging feeling in me that just knew that's not true. That's not true. There is absolutely a way for people to change their behaviors and use the practical tactical tools in order to shift their shape and size and 
love themselves where they are, heal their relationship to food, heal, heal, the, heal their relationship to their body at the same time. Those things can happen simultaneously. They are not separate from one another. And in fact, um, it's all the same. We are all this, we are, we are, what am I trying to say? It's this, we are this one being, right? Meaning as we heal ourselves, as we heal our relationship to food, body, um, our past, our nervous system, heal our nervous system dysregulation, we are more inclined to do the practical, tactical things that get us to a healthier body weight, shape, and size, if that's what you're looking for. So they're, they're very intertwined. And so really that launched the direction of my career of how I wanted to address people in this, in this space. I'm very grateful for that meeting because, um, you know, <laughs> my father would say, you know, that that's very like me. Someone tells me I can't do something and it really, really cements it for me. Oh, I'll show you how I'll do something. Right. And so what I can say very, very, um, with 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 a hundred percent confidence is that it's absolutely possible to both be working on intentional weight loss and to heal your relationship to food and body. Those things can happen at the very same time. They do not need to be separate from one another. Now, don't get me wrong. There are instances where people's journey lead them to a place where it's important for them to let go of intentional weight loss for a while in order to heal, right? And then can come back to that if that feels right for them. There are absolutely clients that I have that let go of intentional weight loss and just focus on the healing their relationship with food and body. And they never come back to it because they realize they are happy exactly where they are. The, the point is not that there is a, a right way to do things. The point is that it's all welcome. You do not have to have this either or. It's both and. And the issue I see in the anti-diet space right now is that there is a shaming of people. There are rules and regulations to be allowed into the anti-diet space. You're not allowed to diet. You can't be looking to lose weight. You can't have intentional weight loss because they'll say it doesn't work. Intentional weight loss doesn't work. It actually does work. <laughs> Uh, and this is a, a video for another day, but there is a complete miscommunication of the truth out there that diets don't work. They actually do. What the issue is, is that as humans, it's very difficult for us to stick to certain types of calorie restriction. The issue is that we have a hard time staying consistent with something. The issue is that we've been sold a bill of goods that restriction is bad and saying no to things is bad. And, you know, that's a diet and we shouldn't be dieting. That doesn't work anyway. We get very confused about what program to use or what path to take because of all the noise in the industry. But it's actually not true that diets don't work. They do. The research shows that in controlled environments where um, we control for certain variables, whether it's calories or macronutrients or whatever it is, uh, diets do work. It's whether or not they're sustainable and whether or not you can do them over a long enough period of time to get you to where you want to go before something pulls you off track. Those are the pieces that we can work on from an emotional, a psychological, a physiological standpoint in order to have more agency and control over. So I'm going down a rabbit hole now, but here's what I wanted to say. In my view, the anti-diet movement and the restrictive dieting movement are on opposite sides of the same coin. There are some good things in both camps, but both of them shun the other. And in reality, for the people who I work with that have the most success, that are living the most aligned and their happiest and healthiest lives, they're somewhere in the middle. They see the utility in both things, both in some of the tools that the diet industry promotes and also in some of the um, rhetoric that the anti-diet industry promotes. It's the beautiful middle where people find their happiest and healthiest selves and that peace and joy that they're searching for. So that's your thought to chew on today. Uh, and with that in mind, where I wanted to go with that is that there's an invitation for you as you, as we spend the next few days together looking at, okay, well, how do you want to spend your 2023 and how do you make goals for that or set visions for that? And some of the ways that people are doing that wrong. What I wanted to invite you to pay attention to is, do you have a desire within you 
to meet a certain goal or have a certain accomplishment or whatever it is, but are feeling the pull from whether it's social media or things that you're reading or books that you're listening to or whatever that are telling you that that desire is either unachievable or wrong or bad, um, just start to play with what is right for you. And I'm here to give you permission. If you have a desire to change your shape and size because you feel like you're not living in the highest and best version of yourself, can we explore that being okay? And how does that... Um, desire play out in your everyday behaviors in a healthier way. Those are a lot of things that we're going to explore in the next few days. So I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, let me know what questions you have. I will see you tomorrow.